But I want to give you a mathematical treatment of uh, merged sort, just so that you have in mind a, an optimal sorting. And so, again, all the computer scientists here know all about this, but if you're a mathematician or an engineer, let's run through it together. We want to determine an unknown linear order. And so here's what I do. I grab two accomplices, and I say, I'm going to give you some assignment. I'm going to give you an assignment. Your job is to find what is the unknown linear order restricted to the first n over 2 integers. And your job is to find the unknown linear order restricted to the second n over 2 integers. Now, you can, in fact, do this independently, and you can do it at the same time. And what wonderful device do you call that? Parallel processing. So merge sort has the advantage that it is easily programmable in a parallel computing environment. So it can, it can be made to run very, very fast if you have a lot of processors. So I could sort a huge array by giving each one of you a job. OK, but now I'm, I'm, so the basic operation, I'm just going to give it two jobs. You do half the job. You do half the job. All right, now, imagine, and to make this very, very practical, Every time I give a test, I get 65 papers. Now I have to enter the grades. So what I have to do is I have to sort them alphabetically to match the T-square, the grading list. Now how does a human sort 65 papers? How would you do it? You know, when you play cards, you, you sort if you play if you play uh, bridge, you put your spades and then your hearts and your clubs and your diamonds. You do something. If you pay, play poker, you have to be careful how you arrange your hand because people will interpret when you, you move cards. It tells them things. But, uh, so a lot of poker players just pick up the hand and don't touch anything. But I got to enter grades. I got 65 tests. Okay. Now here's... What I could do, I just take the 65 tests and divide them into two stacks. I don't even have to measure the stacks. Just make it about half. Put half here and half here. Then I sort this half. Then I sort this half. That's what these guys are doing. See, they're off finding the unknown linear order on the two halves. OK, but I do this half and do this half. But now, here's what I do physically. I take those two stacks, which are now sorted alphabetically. Here they are. And I look at the top two tests. And I compare them alphabetically. One of them is first. I take that one off and turn it in the third stack upside down. Now I have two more on top. What I do, I look at them, and I take the lesser of the two, whichever it is, and turn it upside down on this stack over here. This is the merge operation in merge sort. When I finish through this stack of merging, what do I have there? It's all done. It's all done. Okay, so you do your job, you do your job, then I'll do the merge. That's nice of me, isn't it? All right, so now let's talk about the, the running time. There's two different things going on here. There's the sorting, the subproblems, and there's the merging. The merging is easy. If you have n over 2 and n over 2, how many operations does it take to make that pile over here? I have to look, I have to compare at most n times. That's easy. Okay, so the running time, 
for the whole thing is I have to, he has to do running time of n over 2. He has to do running time n over 2. That's double. And then I have to do n. And so now the whole process has this recursion of r of n is twice r of n over 2 plus n. And now, trust me, a function which satisfies that recurrence, r of n is twice r n over 2 plus n, has running time, which is big O of n log n. So merge sort is one of the optimal algorithms. And I hope it's clear to you from this discussion, uh, counting the twice r n over 2, I can save time there if, if they don't have to use the same computer. Because if they, can, if they each have their own computer, that step can be done concurrently. And so I, now I can run much faster. Okay. Huh. All right. So now we're beginning to get a feel for what it means to talk about problem size what it means to talk about running time, what it means to compare two different algorithms in terms of their running times, to say that one is big O of the other or that one is little o of the other. When you win, try to win with a little o. That's the way to win. Big O's are weak. Little o's are strong. Show that you always get an algorithm which is a little o of what your competitor does and you will eat his or her lunch. And if you never do that, probably you will be on the outside looking for a job. And uh, those of you who uh, know a little bit about the applications of this will understand that the real world of computing and this kind of optimization work is, is essentially like the wild, wild west in that the gunslingers come down the corridor and they face off and they draw and they shoot. Now, what do they draw and they shoot? Well, OK, it might be a, a problem which is available on the web for anybody to solve. And your solution has a running time. And yours can be compared with anybody else's. For many years, Georgia Tech had, had the best computational optimizer on the planet here. His name was William J. Cook. We stole him uh, from Belcor. He was a colleague of mine when I worked in industry. Then he went to Princeton. Then he came to Georgia Tech. Currently, he's at Waterloo. And uh, I consider it a great tragedy that we have apparently, for the moment, lost William J. Cook to Waterloo. Because you do not want to face William J. Cook in an alley drawing computers as six shooters. You will lose. You will lose. OK. I will see you on Thursday.